Remember all those economics classes you didn't pay attention to back in high school and college? Uh, I know I took micro and macroeconomics multiple times to get through it at good old Youngstown State University. Uh, and even once the University of Akron before I, you know, C's get degrees before we finally slid through. Perfect example of good old supply and demand playing out at its finest with our good old friends, Disney Lore Kana. What is going on, YouTube people? Today, a little Lore Kana talk. Uh, I know we don't, you know, we're not a Lore Kana based channel or anything, but it is always interesting following these emerging markets and kind of what's moving and shaking in the other collectible spaces because a lot of times you can learn a lot of stuff from it and apply that to the things that we do collect whether that's cards comics sports cards whatever so for a quick history lesson lorcana came out earlier this year it was super hyped super pumped everyone went crazy there was not enough supply booster boxes starter decks everything lorcana the first wave was not big enough at all to handle the ravenous fans and flippers and investors and everything else that wanted a piece of this action for whatever reason they wanted it for that skyrocketed prices to the moon booster boxes at one point in time were flirting with four hundred dollars ravensburger the company that makes the game responded and said there'll be a reprint at the beginning of the year sometime q1 and the fans were like that is not enough we are screwed and then, you know, you have the normal, like I said, I, I, I compare the Lorcana Facebook groups to watching Nat Geo. It's like watching the lions hunt the zebras and, you know, all the natural predators and stuff. Watching an emerging market go through its growing pains of what is grading? We hate retail flippers. Why are people clearing the shelves? Will there be a first print? Uh, you know, why do these cards sell for so much money? I just want to play the game. This is stupid. This is great. And the endless posts that kind of circled around that. Fast forward a little bit. Uh, the company says, we are going to get a reprint out even faster. Uh, we are going to get one out this fall, potentially. Meanwhile, the second set is about to release. Well, here we sit. The reprint has hit. Uh, and it is still actually hitting. And prices have tanked. Uh, these boxes literally went from overnight. Uh, you can see here on the old, we're on TCG player right now. They were $385, almost still $400 a box on TCG player. A couple days later, they have dropped all the way down into the $240 range. And at one point in time earlier this week, they had actually gotten down to as low as $200. And I know I have seen deals a lot cheaper than this $240 listing. I've seen people selling in Facebook groups for 200. I had a local LGS today selling for 150, which is like the, the actual MSRP on this stuff as this second wave hits. And it is a classic example of supply and demand. All of a sudden, we have a lot more supply and the demand is not there to eat it up. Uh, I have not checked in on singles prices yet. My gut tells me is that those will come down. It'll take a little bit longer because everyone buying these new boxes that are ripping them, it's going to take a little bit longer for that supply to hit the open market. But I would assume you are going to see the same thing on the single side with these prices starting to creep down as all this inventory now hits the market. From a player perspective, great. You have more cards. You can have events. You could do the whole thing. It has been a major pain point. And it really is, it's a tricky situation for the manufacturer because you don't know how much to make on the first release. And I think they always kind of underprint the first wave, one, for a financial aspect, and two, it does drive hype. You know, a lot, I know a lot of people that were like, what's this Lorcana nonsense I hear everyone talking about? And you see people, then, you know, everyone's got to line up in lines and it causes big scenes at Gen Con and that all goes viral on social media. It's the whole game that they play and it works. It absolutely works. But... You could go too extreme. And when you go too far the other direction, then you piss the player base off. People can't get product. That frustrates people. The flippers enter the market. That frustrates people. And now the people that you actually need to sustain the game for a long period of time get forced out, get disenchanted, get pissed off, whatever you want to insert there. And they leave the scene or they, they take a break or, you know, whatever they want to do, but they're not actively participating anymore. 
and that becomes a problem. So good on them for getting this reprint out. It seems like it is a large reprint. And like I said, this is going to be hitting very soon or right before the second set is about to release here in, a, I think, I don't know the exact release date, but it is very soon. It's like within a week or two uh, that the next set comes out, Rise of the Floodborne. So we will see what that does, because as we also know, the next thing is always the big chase. So now everyone will be going crazy for those boxes. And did they print? I have to imagine. Uh, maybe they couldn't because the orders were already locked in. I have to imagine they printed that set heavier than the first set, given the demand that they've seen. But maybe they weren't able to react in time. I could see that as well. So do we repeat this whole cycle over again where now everyone can get chapter one boxes, but chapter two boxes are nowhere to be found. And then that pisses people off again and we start the cycle all over again. As Battlestar Galactica used to say, all this has happened before, all this will happen again. Uh, the other interesting kind of angle that's floating around with all this is the whole, and this is a funny one, I saw this coming a mile away. First print versus second print. And this is fantastic. And this is another one of those things on you know the social media sphere with huge comment threads about why there is a first print or why there's not a first print or why it matters, or why it doesn't matter, and it doesn't make any sense, and all this nonsense. So what happened was, the first wave of boxes that came out were a little suspect because they weren't actually sealed. They were sealed by a cardboard pull tab down at the bottom. You'd rip them open, and the sides were open. You could literally slide packs in and out of the box if you were pretty careful about it uh, on these boxes. That is obviously a huge problem. Uh, you can't be able to go in there and get the packs out. So, and the other thing to note, people asked, and quite frequently, hey, will there be some sort of denotion that this is a second print on this new printing coming out? Because essentially, people that heavily had heavy bags, as Rudy likes to say, in chapter one sealed wax, wanted that to be a first print. Because what does that do? It skyrockets the price. Us collectors, we love ourselves a first print. Can't get enough of it. Look at alpha of anything. People love it, can't get enough of it. Company says, no, we are not doing that. We don't want to create that. Everyone's like, oh, okay, cool. No problem here. And then what do they do? Sneaky sneak. The second wave boxes that come out have tape on the ends. Clear tape, nothing crazy. That essentially keep the side flaps down. So you can't slide packs in and out. I think there might be a piece of tape down at the bottom. Uh, I don't know the differences, but I believe you can also tell uh, the cases apart. There is different, uh, some something on the case, and someone can let me know in the comments down below, that denote the newer printing of the product versus the original printing of the product in case format. And supposedly they've also altered a couple of the cards that had small errors on them. They errated those so they would be, you know, printed correctly on the second wave. So you can see where this is going. That the narrative has already begun that there is a first print of this stuff. And it really only matters in sealed. Uh, if you open it, 95% of the cards are exactly the same. But the sealed perspective denotes you could definitely tell the difference between a first print box and something that came from the second print wave. And we all know how that situation is going to play out. Listen, I get it. A lot of people might not understand why that matters. They might think it's a false narrative spun by collectors, investors, flippers, whatever. But there is having the first print of something like that will drive extra demand for it. Uh, I didn't pull any up, but there have been some drastic differences in eBay sales on sealed cases of first print versus second print. Now, the first print sealed case is probably the better way to go than a loose box because people were speculating that you could just figure out a way to mirror the stickers that they're using or get something very similar and you could probably replicate that on a second print box because you're not going to open it to see the errated cards most likely for most people buying this stuff but where there's a will there's a way people will figure out a way to game this system sealed cases it does seem like a little bit of a different story so that is a fun side narrative that is currently the thing that everyone is fighting about on the social sphere. So uh, that's all I really got for you, boys and girls. I just kind of wanted to comment in on here. We haven't looked in more Arcana since it kind of released. Once again, I'm not a player of the game. I bought some boxes. I ripped the box. I graded some singles. I sold some sealed boxes. But 
like I've always said for years, it, it I think it is worth following a emerging markets because it's entertaining. And B, you can also you can learn stuff on there or and, and just how these things evolve and the differences that we see across different collectibles. A lot of things are different. There are a lot of things that are the same, especially when it comes to the growing pains of stuff like this. And it is kind of a fascinating case study. So that's all I got for you, boys and girls. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace.